Hi everyone, my name is Pauline, I am a Belgian nuclear medicine resident and in this video I will explain to you what radioactivity, radioactive decay and half-life is. And at the end of the video I will give you an example of how half-life can be used in everyday life. The balance of protons and neutrons in a nucleus determines whether a nucleus will be stable or unstable. Too many neutrons or protons can upset this balance, making the nucleus unstable. Elements with fewer protons, such as the ones near the top of the periodic table, are stable if they have the same number of neutrons and protons. For example, carbon. Carbon-12 is stable and has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. However, as the number of protons increases, more neutrons are needed to keep the nucleus stable. For example, lead-207 has 82 protons and 125 neutrons. Unstable nuclei, so nuclei with too many protons or too few neutrons, will disintegrate or decay by emitting radiation. This is called radioactive decay. A material that can undergo radioactive decay is considered to be radioactive, and the amount of radiation released by the material is its radioactivity. Radioactive decay is a spontaneous and random process. It means that it is not possible to say which particular nucleus from a block of radioactive material will decay next. But given that there are so many of them, it is possible to say that a certain number will decay in a certain time. Scientists can use statistical methods to tell when half of the unstable nuclei will have decayed. This is called the half-life. Half-life is the time it takes for the activity of the source to fall to half its original value. Here's an example of how a radioactive sample is decaying over time. Iodine-131 is a radioactive isotope of iodine that is commonly used to treat hyperthyroidism. Iodine-131 undergoes beta decay to become stable xenon-131. The half-life of this reaction is approximately 8 days. This means that if we had a sample of 8 iodine atoms, after 8 days, half of the atoms will have decayed to form xenon and half of the atoms will still be radioactive iodine. After an additional 8 days, half of the still radioactive iodine atoms will decay, leaving 2 atoms of iodine. This same idea would apply if we measured our sample in grams instead of atoms. If we started with 40 grams of iodine, after one half life or 8 days, 20 grams would have decayed into xenon and 20 grams would still be radioactive. After an additional half life, 10 grams of the original sample would still be iodine, while the remaining 30 grams would have decayed into xenon. Note that this process continues and although the amount of iodine might get very small, it does not drop to zero completely. Archaeologists use half-life to date the age of organic objects in a process known as carbon dating. During beta decay, carbon-14 becomes nitrogen-14. At the time of death, organisms stop producing carbon-14. Scientists know the half-life of carbon, so they can figure out how long ago the organism died. Here's a quick summary. If there are too many or too few neutrons for a given number of protons, the resulting nucleus will be unstable and will undergo radioactive decay. This decay occurs at a constant, predictable rate that is referred to as half-life. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for a given radioisotope to lose half of its radioactivity. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up.